Hi, this is Matt, and I'm going to share with you today my newest experiment, which is bacon pecan panucci. Now, panucci is a brown sugar fudge. Here we've got it cooking right here, right now. I've got it here on the stove, cooking to soft ball stage. And it's a pretty standard panucci. It's got two cups of brown sugar, two cups of sugar, and one cup of milk. That's cooking right here. And once that's cooked to soft ball stage, I'm going to add three tablespoons, one, two, three, of butter and a tablespoon of good vanilla. I like Mexican vanilla, I think it's the best. But, and also, like the panucci, I'm gonna add pecans. But I'm gonna go a little further with this one. I'm gonna add bacon. Now you could cook up your own if you'd like, but I actually have here this Costco bacon that comes in a bag, and I've sifted out the meat from the fat, and then I've diced it up. I diced it up very fine. And I'm going to add this and this together just before I start stirring after it's cooked to softball stage. And as you can see, it is indeed Christmas. Say hi, Alex. Here's Alex hi, playing hi, here, hi. right here on the breakfast bar while we are creating. And I happen to have some around. I think this is probably optional, but I'm going to add a tablespoon of Tarani's bacon flavored syrup. I mean, hey, how cool is that? And we'll see how that does as well. So we have here. The mixture cooking, again, you always go very slowly and patiently. I've got both my thermometer here and I've got my cold water here to double check and make sure. And common, uh, a lot of problems people have with candy making have to do with altitude. All the temperatures that are given for candy making are given at sea level, and a lot of the United States isn't at sea level. I'm at 4,000 feet here where I live, and the rule is for every 1,000 feet over sea level, you subtract 2 degrees from your final temperature. So I took that temperature for softball and I dropped it 8 degrees, 8 times 2, to get the proper target temperature so that I don't take this too far and turn it into a big hunk of rock in the bottom of the pan. All right, we'll let this cook for a while, and then we'll get back. We'll resume once we're at the place we need to be for the next steps. Okay, so I've got it here, the 3 tablespoons of vanilla. Oh, sorry, three tablespoons of butter. I'm taking that off here. I don't need this anymore, so I'm just going to take this out of the way. Okay, and then mix this in. And you want to get this going while it's hot. And I'm also going to add, right here, we've got the tablespoon of vanilla. Okay, so i got my tablespoon here. And again, I like the good Mexican vanilla, if you can find it. So there is a tablespoon, and I really like vanilla, so if I go a little bit overboard, with that, ah, there we go. That's the best stuff there is. Okay, and since I've got it, I think this is an optional step, but since I've got it here, I'm going to go ahead and add a tablespoon of this Tarani bacon syrup as well. Okay, so it's pretty interesting flavored stuff. It really is like liquid bacon in a bottle. Okay, you see here the bottle right here. So since we have it on hand, I don't really think it's necessary because of the chopped bacon, but nonetheless, we'll try it since we have it. Okay. Now, we seal this all up, and we stir this all in, and then as soon as this gets all stirred in, this has to sit undisturbed until 110 degrees. Now, we're not going to stick a thermometer in and figure that out. You know it's about 110 degrees when you can put your hands on the outside of the pot here, and it doesn't hurt. Like now, ow, it's too hot. But in about 15 or 20 minutes, it's going to be cool enough we can start the final phase, which is adding the nuts and the bacon and then beating it up into shape and putting it in the whole pan. Now, until we get there, this has to sit undisturbed. Don't bump it, don't move it. If you do, or if somebody else does, it's going to create sugar crystals in there and it's going to be grainy. It's about 20 minutes later. Uh, again, you got to kind of pay attention to it. Make sure you don't let it go too far, otherwise it'll set up right here in the pan. And then put my hands on it, and it's warm, but it's not too warm. Okay, and I'm going to take it again, trying to avoid bumping it too much. Move it over here to a place I can work with it. Get off the stove. Yeah, move your, move your tiger there. Okay, and now I'm going to add the ingredients to it. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to take these, the chopped bacon and the pecans, and I'm going to move them down here like so. Okay, I get rid of this. Okay. And then I'm going to move it here to a place where I'm comfortable, because now I've got to start beating it. This is like all traditional fudges, that is, fudges that don't use marshmallows and chocolate chips. It has to be beaten to develop. And how long it has to be beaten kind of depends on you. I'm kind of a big guy, so it's going to take about three to five minutes of constant attention. 
to get it. If you're a little smaller, uh, it might take you longer. And basically the idea is you are helping it to polymerize. You're literally turning this into like sugar plastic. That's what you're doing. And the trick is to know when you're done. And you're done when it's less glossy. See how it's glossy right now? It's got some shimmer. It starts to thicken and it suddenly becomes much less glossy. It becomes much less shiny. And really when that is, it just kind of happens. I generally find about three to five minutes in is when it starts to happen for me. My arm starts to get tired. Your arm will get tired too. So make sure you've got help nearby if you start to run out of steam. Otherwise the fudge will not develop properly. It won't be creamy. So I've got my buttered pan ready. I did this while I was waiting for it to cool. Just a buttered pan, not grease, because grease would be really yucky on the bottom of the fudge. Just butter. And you can see how it's starting to thick up. My arm's getting sore. But you can see how it's definitely thicker. It's a little less shiny. It's starting to get, and you'll feel it again thicken. It's just the right moment. It gets stiff and takes, yeah, it's been, I've been at this for about five minutes. I'm definitely feeling it. Okay, see that? It's starting to get definitely less shiny. Okay, yeah, there we go. Now, if you wait too long, it's going to set up right in the pan. And it's really tempting. It's really tempting to want to scrape the sides because there's just so much of that fudge goodness in there. But you don't want to do that because the sides are crystalline. They have sugar crystals in them. And those sugar crystals in there can make the whole batch green. This is the critical moment. Okay, so I'm just going just a little bit down there. Trust me, don't worry about if you've got stuff left over. You'll find a kid who's more than willing to eat what you've got left in the pan there. Okay, so I like that. There's a few places I can get that I don't have to scrape. But there, it's already starting to go. Again, fudge is basically sugar plastic. Polymerized sugar in solution. Okay, so I'm going to push this into the pan and... And again, the rule for this is, okay, the rule for this is it's got to cool undisturbed. So I'm going to go put it somewhere safe. It can cool undisturbed and finish setting. So here's the finished product, our brown sugar pecan bacon fudge, also known as panucci. Ew. Okay? Yes. You. Bacon I'm, in fudge? Bacon in fudge. See, my daughter is bleeding. So you can cut it up and serve it as part of your desserts, and it is wonderful. See, nice right there. Mmm, brown sugar fudge. Merry Christmas.